Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, sorry if you came to my thesis defense. You are going to see some of the same work. Um, so my project is on stable isotope analysis of yellowfin and blackfin tuna islands is in the Gulf of Mexico. So the goal of this research was to assess the use of stable isotope analysis as an indicator of trophic position increase and as an alternative to traditional tagging methods to track uh, pelagic migratory species. And in this case, our pelagic migratory species are yellowfin tuna and blackfin tuna. So isotopes like carbon-12 and carbon-13 and nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15 can undergo the same process, same chemical and biological processes as each other, but they undergo these at different rates. And we can quantify the ratios of isotopes using delta notation. And that delta notation gets put into units of per mil. And because of these different processing rates of the heavier and lighter atoms, when we see a higher or lower delta value, it means something. So one of these delta trends we look for in fish tissues is trophic position. Heavier isotopes tend to accu accumulate in higher trophic level organisms by approximately one per mil per trophic level for delta carbon and approximately 3.4 per mil for delta nitrogen. Another trend we can look at are geographic trends, and these are portrayed in isotope maps known as isoscapes. And this is an isoscape you might recognize. It's from uh, Kara Radabaugh's work. And this is a delta carbon isoscape, and you can see that in general, delta carbon decreases with ocean depth. For the broader Gulf of Mexico, there tends to be lower delta carbon values around the Mississippi River and in the northwestern Gulf. And this isoscape is from Le Alvarado's 2021 paper. Delta nitrogen values have a clear latitudinal gradient in the Gulf of Mexico with higher delta nitro nitrogen values in the northern Gulf and lower values in the central and southern Gulf. So how do we even measure these trends in fish? Well, the island's tissues of fish can actually preserve the lifetime record of isotopes. So basically, as a new island's layer is formed, which is called a lamina, uh, the old island's lamina undergoes partial cell death. So it's no longer biologically reactive. So then we can peel the laminae of the islands, like this video shows, and run each lamina through the elemental analyzer isotope ratio mass spectrometer and we get delta values for each successive lamina. So from the innermost laminae, which is the core, to the outermost lamina. And so then we can plot those delta values against relative age to get a whole lifetime profile of trophic position and movement. So all of my fish for this study were caught in the northern Gulf of Mexico, with the majority being caught around oil platforms, like this one in 2020. And for this study, we had 46 yellowfin tuna and 31 blackfin tuna. So the three objectives of this study were to infer basal resource dependence and offshore and onshore movement from delta carbon 13 profiles, interpret the general trophic changes in north and south movement using delta nitrogen profiles, and use the delta nitrogen and delta carbon profiles to interpret overall spatial movement and residency of the two species. So I'm going to be going through objectives one and two together since we did the same analyses on the delta carbon profiles and the delta nitrogen. So these are violin plots that just show the distribution and mean delta values of the outer lamina and the core. And so that highlighted plot is the delta carbon values. And you can see that the outer laminae means are generally the same for both species, but these core means are pretty different. And so what that could indicate to us is that these two species have distinct spawning grounds with yellowfin tuna spawning slightly more offshore in those lower delta carbon environments than blackfin tuna. So moving on to delta nitrogen, again, those outer means are basically the same. And then we see some difference in these core means, um, but because the scale of delta nitrogen is so much bigger than delta carbon, it's really not that big of a difference. And you can see that the distribution overlaps quite a bit more. So these are the actual individual isotopic profiles for yellowfin tuna. These are the delta carbon profiles, and you'll be seeing quite a few of these. So just to orient you to this plot, 
we have our delta value on the y-axis, so this is either carbon or nitrogen. And then we have some sort of proxy for age on the x-axis. In this case, I used laminar midpoint. And laminar midpoint is just calculated as the eye lens diameter before peeling a lens and the eye lens diameter after peeling that lens. So again, these are the delta carbon individual profiles for yellowfin tuna. And so for each, for each individual, we ran a Spearman rank correlation to classify that relationship between delta between the delta value and the laminar midpoint. And so all the plots highlighted in green indicate significant and positive correlations, and all the plots highlighted in purple are significant and negative correlations. And then we also ran a correlation for all the laminae combined for each species. So you can see here in yellowfin tuna that about half of our yellowfin tuna had significant um, relationships, and from those significant relationships, most of them were positive. And then overall, as a species, they had a pretty weak correlation between delta carbon and laminar midpoint, but it was still significant and positive. So moving on to blackfin tuna, same thing, um, but you can see that blackfin tuna the majority of the individuals had non-significant correlations and as a species it was also a non-significant correlation. So we also wanted to look at these species-wide patterns so we plotted all lamina and then used a locally weighted scatter plot smoothing basically just to take the noise out of these profiles and look at overall patterns. So these figures that are highlighted are the delta carbon and you can see that both species have similar patterns where it's increasing in delta carbon early on in their lives. And then they have that delta carbon dip around or just before age one. And so what we're assuming is happening here is some sort of ontogenetic movement. So these fish are moving inshore into higher delta carbon environments at the beginning of their lives. And then just before age one, they're moving back into those offshore environments once they reach a good size. So then these are the delta nitrogen, thank you. These are the delta nitrogen uh, individual profiles for yellowfin tuna, same thing, spearmint rank correlations. And you can see that these profiles already look a lot more linear than our delta carbon profiles. And the majority of our individuals do have significant and positive correlations between delta nitrogen and laminar midpoint. Same thing for blackfin tuna, except in this case, all of our individuals had significant and positive correlations. And we're just reiterating the same thing with these smooth curves where that delta nitrogen is just increasing the whole way. So to further separate trophic position increase from movement, we can use a modified von Bertalanffy growth equation. And so the assumption here is that the data will fit the growth curve better in a fish that is only increasing in trophic position and not moving. So these are the fits between the von B and the delta carbon. And you can see that for both species, it's a very weak fit, but it is still significant. And then for delta nitrogen, the fit is much better for both species, but particularly for blackfin tuna, it's a really good fit. So to review objective one, we found that yellowfin and blackfin tuna likely have different spawning grounds due to those differing innermost laminar values. And then the smooth curves and the isotopic profiles indicate possible ontogenetic movement by both species because of that carbon bump at the beginning of their lives. We can also infer that there is definite movement across the delta carbon gradient by both species because of the weak and non-significant correlations and weak nonlinear regressions, especially for blackfin tuna. And then for delta nitrogen, so for objective number two, we see an increase in trophic position, and that's because of the smooth showing hardly any deviation, the positive correlations overall, and the nonlinear regressions being positive and significant. There is the possibility of northern movement in both species, and that could be because the increase in delta nitrogen could be partially attributed to movement um, from that lower delta nitrogen uh, environment in the south to the northern Gulf of Mexico. We do know that that variation seen in individual profiles does indicate at least some movement. So finishing up with objective number three, which is looking at delta nitrogen there on the y-axis and delta carbon there 
on the x-axis, and these are more spearman rank correlations. And you can see that the majority of our individuals are, um, well, a good amount of our individuals are still significant and positive for yellowfin tuna, um, but we do have some significant and negative individuals. And then our assumption is that if these plots were linear, then these fish would not be moving in the environment. So delta nitrogen and delta carbon would be increasing together. But we can see that's not the case for most of our profiles. And then as a species, the row value is also weak, uh, but significant. For blackfin tuna, there's even uh, less significant profiles. And as a species, they actually had a negative row value uh, that was negative and significant, but very weak also. So to review objective number three, we definitely see movement across the ice escape because of weak overall correlations uh, between delta nitrogen and delta carbon, especially for blackfin tuna again. The delta nitrogen and delta carbon were not always increasing together like we would expect in fish that only uh, show trophic position increase. Um, however, there is still the, possible, the possibility of periods of residency for these fish. Um, some of the individual profiles were positive and significant, especially in yellowfin tuna. And then if you look at each individual profile um, of the delta nitrogen and delta carbon, you can see times where both are increasing together for a good amount of time. So to conclude, stable isotope analysis can be used successfully on pelagic migratory species anywhere that there is a distinct isoscape. And then improving the isoscapes, particularly in pelagic waters, will improve our ability to determine lifetime patterns. Additional work would include sampling tuna around the Gulf of Mexico and using compound-specific stable isotope analysis to further tease apart movement and change in trophic position. Thank you. Any questions?